Well, many thanks for inviting me to speak uh, with you. Uh, my name is Hugh Strange. I run a, a small practice based in London. Um, we uh, have, over the last 10 years or so, been working on a number of projects uh, that are um, sometimes urban, sometimes rural, um, uh, always small or small to medium. And I think through these projects, there's um, a particular interest in um, building with timber, um, but not in a um, not in a necessarily easily classifiable way. I think um, sometimes engineered timber, sometimes um, traditional um, timber construction, sometimes um, timber structures, and sometimes timber linings, and and various kind of combinations of all of these. I think um, rather than launching straight into the projects, I wanted to um, perhaps frame three kind of broad ideas through which one might uh, consider the projects. Um, and I think equally one might consider um, the particular ideas of the practice in relation to timber and um, the use of timber. Um, so I suppose the first um, of those ideas is, is about um, an inhabiting structure. And on one, on one level, that's the idea of the way that structures uh, inhabit a site. Um, I, I, think the, I think all of the projects have a um, simplicity to their plan and their form that's in, in some ways almost um, archetypal. And yet there's a sense of them having a very intimate relationship with their sites that's very specific rather than um, uh, generic. Uh, but also inhabiting structures in that a lot of the projects uh, have very explicit structures and the, um, the architecture seeks to um, simultaneously enjoy that structure, but work towards um, kind of um, strategies of how one might inhabit, how, how one might assist in habitation of those structures. So that's the first idea. I think the second is an intense relation, an intense interest in, um, in the construction process, um, which to some extent is uh, an interest in developing what might be considered a kind of, um, kind of uh, direct relationship between artifact and process that, that the artifact becomes a kind of index of the construction process. Uh, but it's also a, a, an interest in um, how things are made in, in and the broader questions that come to play through that interest, the uh, related questions of the relationship of uh, site works with off-site works, with um, the, the people making the buildings and the skills that they have. And, and I think the third, um, I think the third theme or third idea that the work might be framed um, is, is an idea about material sensitivity, which in a specific way about how that kind of results in the, um, in the architecture. I think there is a, um, a characteristic of gentleness in the architecture that comes through that um, care over how materials are put together. But also there's another aspect to it, which is about um, material relationships, about not just how you construct and connect, but uh, um, the visual relationship, but other relationships between um, materials within a building as you put them together, whether that reaches back to some of those um, uh, ideas about off-site site or different forms of the same material or materials that somehow um, have a, a relationship of interest, whether that's uh, in the case of this photograph, the relationship between timber and um, concrete, obviously uh, with the, in this case, the, the timber board marking of the concrete um, still visible. Um, good, so I will, um, start talking about the projects. This first project was the um, first project the practice um, produced and it was my own house and office. It's in, uh, it's in London and you see that there's a busy road 
with the office located on it and the house set back um, on a backland site with a with a courtyard space between. And um, the house, to some extent, in this model appears almost um, diagrammatically dropped into the site uh, like a matchstick box or. Um, um, but actually, the spatial relations are rather more complex than that um, model might um, suggest. You see here on the left hand side is the house which sits in close proximity to the existing walls and is a very simple house with one long um, kitchen living dining space on the left and an enfilade relationship of bedrooms, bathrooms, utilities on the right with all the bathroom, kitchen, utility all kind of back to back in the center and then there's a courtyard and the office that I'm speaking from is on the right hand side and this model um, shows something of that plan um, idea and the proximity with the wall, but also how through using cross laminated timber, um, there's a particular relationship between the building structure and that um, existing surrounding wall. So this was the site um, as we found it. It was at the time rather unpromising, um, but there was an existing slab on the ground and an existing wall around much of the site. And we utilized those two um, uh, existing uh, features. The ground we cast straight on top of with a new slab with this main contractor doing this work. And onto that slab, a um, CLT structure was craned over the wall. This was delivered from Switzerland, craned over the wall and constructed in about one week. And already after about two days of the um, construction works of the CLT, um, you get a sense of um, this off-site work that is um, delivered to the site and then put together with great skill. And the architectural ideas of the project are already made explicit that the house is simultaneously um, read through the cross laminated timber structure and the surrounding walls. So the final house, the completed house nestles behind that wall being one and a half stories high, you just see the top of it peek out. And through the opening, you get a glimpse of the house within. And um, moving through that um, entrance, you discover the spaces between the house and the existing walls. Spaces often surprisingly um, intimate. There's no sense of a garden per se. Um, and the house here with its um, foundational slab wrapping up a little to form a bench on the south facing wall, a deep mullion, deep, deep timber mullions, and then the setback profiled cladding to the top. And sometimes this space between the house and the existing wall becomes even closer. And sometimes the house is more visible and more apparent. Um, but always there's a sense of um, empathy between the two, a sense rather, of, rather than um, a stark counterpoint or a kind of some strong strong contrast between old and new of the new house um, um, being friends with the wall. And inside the house, the uh, you read the CLT, which is um, has been whitewashed but um, retains the the character of the timber and um, the other wood is all a tropical hardwood that um, somehow forms the windows, doors, kitchens, but also all the kind of built in furniture. And these two timbers, one being engineered and um, very much a kind of late 20th century, 21st century um, contemporary timber product. Um, 
made off site and assemble at speed, whereas the joinery is is a um, tropical hardwood and it's uh, all made in solid timber rather than veneers and put together with traditional joinery skills. This is the um, Umfalad series of rooms to the rear of the building where a variety of kind of light sources um, play on the various um, layerings of the Umfalad. And always there's a sense that the outside and the inside are not um, too far apart, that the um, materials in the ground is similar, that the whitewashed timber is actually not too far away from the kind of previously painted um, brickwork, and that one uh, lives in the house by meandering between inside and out. And certainly when inside, there's always a sense of the presence of this brick wall and that the, um, uh, the thresholds between the inside and the outside are um, developed such that one's um, uh, as much as possible um, sitting in and along, um, spending one's life in this kind of space between inside and outside. And this is the office space from which I'm speaking, where um, also constructed in CLT, and you get a sense here of the space, of, of the view from the office through to the courtyard, into an interior and back out to the exterior again, this kind of enjoyment of layering space of inside and outside. And finally, it's a, it's a very internalized project. One enters and kind of has one's own world here, um, but actually, it, sits on a busy road with a kind of elevation um, constructed to somehow acknowledge that. So the second project is also a house in London. It's a, you can see from the um, shaded tone that it's a double fronted, but hardly has any space to the rear. And when we took it on, the ambition for the project was rather small, but it had this a uh, very strange section to it. This is a truncated section and odd top, which we couldn't really make sense of until our engineer directed us towards this um, drawing. This was a one of a series of bomb maps um, made at the end of the Second World War and um, showing in particular the V1, V2 um, flying bombs and the sites where they landed in London. And um, our site is um, in this area here, if you can see my cursor, and we're just off the, so the dark blue was um, damaged and demolished, either, well, either destroyed completely or subsequently demolished. And it turns out our building was kind of the next house along, hence it was patched up in a half-hearted way. So, um, we uh, we had to kind of rethink, we had to um, remake much of the house. The client was keen not to tear the whole thing down and start again. So we kept the front and the um, front two rooms, but actually you see on our new section here, we've kept the front elevation and the front room and the staircase up, but actually the whole of the back is new and the whole of the top is new. We took the same, we took advantage at this moment to flip over and put the bedrooms on the bottom and the living space at the top. So there's a kind of Janus character to the house of appearing and existing on the front and completely new on the back, but also a sense that on the ground floor, um, there's a series of um, rooms with windows onto this private courtyard, whereas the upstairs is a timber frame space, um, lightweight and open. So this uh, slightly alarming um, picture shows the um, client's house after we'd taken down everything that was in danger of collapsing, although it has to be said it had been in danger of collapsing for almost 60 years. And the budget was very tiny and we, um, we talked long and hard with the main contractor about how he was going to construct this timber new timber roof. He was adamant that he had a certain pride in his craftsmanship and he could 
um, he could make some nice uh, timber trusses up for us. Um, but actually, uh, we challenged him to kind of match the price that we could find for these cheap off the shelf trusses. Um, and uh, it proved impossible. It proved impossible because there's a kind of market for these. Um, and they come in um, uh, this certain kind of roughness that comes with them. Uh, you see the fixing plates on them and the kind of um, visible writing that you get on them, it's kind of stamps. But actually we, we enjoyed all of that and we enjoyed rather than designing a truss, we enjoyed specifying one, um, but the kind of decisions that come with that. So for instance, rather than a, a um, thick section and having less of them, we enjoyed the kind of delicacy that came from a, specifying a thinner section and more of them, but limiting one's, um, one's design role to um, specification of a kind of ready-made rather than a design of, rather than kind of design from scratch. And in contrast to this extremely cheap and off the shelf uh, spruce top to the space, we constructed a lining at lower level out of um, Douglas fir triboard, um, which both lines the space, but also allows a certain degree of inhabitation, storage, um, shelving, cupboards, seats. And this drawing somehow trying to express that duality of the filigree cheap upper part of the timber structure and the um, this kind of lining of the lower part with bespoke um, joinery of a, of a kind of higher grade. So the Janus house where the front existing is almost unchanged whereas the back presents itself as a new building entirely with the upper level clad in metal, this kind of lightweight upper level and a, a glimpse here into this lower level courtyard, which the smaller rooms look onto. And the completed building upstairs, um, one's still aware of the uh, neighboring properties and the rough uh, walls. Um, but in addition, the the um, the room has this kind of two part uh, construction, this kind of very cheap, lightweight spruce top, um, and this uh, more bespoke joinery made uh, lower level, the parts that one's in contact with, and um, and to some extent the project benefits from avoiding any sense of um, contrast with the existing building of a kind of two-part duality of old and new by making this secondary duality between the, the two types of timber and the lower level and the upper level, two type, two species of timber, but also two ways of thinking about building and timber. And so actually the project becomes this three-way conversation between the existing house and these two ways of building with timber. And this third house, also in London, you see here um, this kind of uh, 19th century suburb of London built with the expansion of the railways that you see to the base here. Um, you know, this happened all around London. And this is works again to an existing house, um, rather grand house, that we did some minor works too, but the um, the couple were keen to think about um, living in their house in a way that was not possible in most London houses. That somehow was a um, alternative way of of living, and we made a space to them that had a different scale to London rooms, and it was made through extending outwards to the back but also digging down um, and then also kind of joining up two spaces. And between these, it kind of transformed and made a new space altogether. And we had to make a, um, we had to construct this in a steel structure, which had enough um, uh, stability, kind of didn't move so that we could hold the um, 
house above, much like the Maison de Verre. And this very different type of plan where the existing house is made up of small rooms, but here you come down to the staircase to the double height kitchen, and it's a frame construction with an internal courtyard and an external courtyard before moving to the garden proper. So there's the steel frame um, propping the house above, a, a very um, uh, easy enjoyment on our part with the with the with the practicalities of bolt making and you know we we, we didn't we, we weren't aspiring to invisible welded um, discrete joints there's a kind of enjoyment of um, how these were put together and then following on from that steel structure a whole um, secondary um, understanding of uh, of how the space was lived in through these um, specialist joinery pieces, which are made with um, large triboard, um, working with a kind of excellent colleague of ours. Um, and sometimes this um, joinery piece is being freestanding, sometimes um, as in the back shelving. And this drawing suggesting something of the idea of this steel structure and its relationship to the um, to the joinery pieces, with the joinery pieces not um, not quite read as independent objects, but also not quite lining the space somewhere in between. This is the um, completed house from the rear, with these uh, nice glimpses through the house from the rear towards that internal courtyard and looking back the other way from the internal cart courtyard through the house towards the rear. And as you come down the staircase, um, you glimpse through this upper level of the steel, this kind of story and a half that um, I suppose similar to the first house um, enjoys at a lower level an idea of built-in storage, built-in elements that kind of accommodate one's life, assist one's life, but also have this kind of upper level, which is somehow um, inaccessible, but a space of light, a space of um, yeah, dreams. And this um, very strong relationship between the steel and the joinery, and I suppose a relationship of um, scale as well, that the, um, the, the two quite obviously operate at a different scale. And um, the timber um, has a very um, considered and deliberate relationship with the steel, not quite touching it, which would imply a kind of lining of the space, but not so far away that it reads as discrete objects. So this next project, I suppose, is a, I suppose we see as kind of hinge project um, to some of the rural works and some of the um, non-domestic works. This is also in London. It's actually twin projects. The, um, there are a series at the front of um, Georgian villas, which are paired. And actually on the right hand side, we were commissioned to uh, do some works to the house, but also build something in the garden. And following on from that, the neighbor um, commissioned us to uh, build something in their garden as well. So I'll start by talking about the right hand one and, and, and move on to the left. So the right hand one, there were works to the house, but we also um, framed the new works around the garden space. So we designed a garden, um, there was a, a pool in the garden and at the rear end, an L-shaped building with a gym and then kind of a series of smaller spaces of a, of a um, internal uh, pool, shower room and sauna. And the model shows the kind of taller major element at the back, which has timber structure and roofs roof lights to the back, and then the smaller wing made up the smaller rooms, which also has um, roof lights. 
and um, the, 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 the walls were all made in um, uh, exposed block work, although we did use lime mortar, but there's a, um, there's a roof structure of um, uh, LVL, uh, lumber veneer laminate, which allowed us to make um, uh, large spans, cantilevers and so on with this kind of very thin delicacy um, due to the efficiency of the timbers. And a relationship between that roof structure, the, the, the major, the roof structure of the major, major space and the smaller spaces and the inhabitation that happens beneath it, the kind of um, almost the kind of contrapuntal rhythms of a structural rhythm and rhythm of life or rhythm of inhabitation of these kind of linings of uh, at the level one lives. And so this is, this photograph shows um, the first building after the completion. You see the large eucalyptus tree that um, the two buildings share, but also this very um, almost typical kind of London um, condition that this is the garden of a Georgian villa, and yet there's light industrial works of a certain scale to the back. And the building with large sliding uh, timber doors and the timber doors open up the corner. So that actually the lumber, to the LVL um, structure allows um, this open corner through the smaller structure cantilevering and the largest structure having a large span. Um, it allows this corner without a column or any support and the two large doors slide away from it. And you get this nice relationship of looking from one part of the building to the other through the courtyard in between. And um, the in the completed building, the exposed block work, the LVL above it, and then a different type of linings lower down of kind of a certain richness to them. So there's terrazzo here, a kind of Brazilian granite, and the joinery here for the doors and so on is made of cherry. So there's this kind of, again, there's this interest in um, using two types of timber, um, one engineered and able to um, allow these kind of structural um, uh, experiences um, through its kind of efficiency, but combined with a different type of timber at lower level that you kind of come into contact with, with that um, has a kind of certain richness to it, but also a certain um, enjoyment of craft. And the neighboring building, interestingly, um, because this came second, we'd already disrupted the uh, roots to this large euc eucalyptus tree as much as we were allowed. So one of the key design factors for the second building was that we had to protect the roots as much as possible with it. So this was a small painting studio um, and it sits alongside that, the tree so that it um, doesn't disrupt it. And it's a, it's a timber frame although there's stud work to the rear and kind of boundary wall. So it's a kind of uh, hybrid. And you see in this plan, this very simple building that faces out back to the house, but actually you enter um, underneath the tree. So um, it's a kind of double square with um, a frame along this side and this column here that two sliding doors open out away from and you enter by walking towards the tree and you turn underneath the tree to enter into the paint studio with a kind of painting area and a brush washing area. And in order to not disturb the roots at all, we built the foundations with steel. So it's got screw piles going down, so there's no concrete in the ground. And the uh, this framework was lifted, floating just above the ground, sitting on the piles. And then after this, everything was timber. 
So the stud work to the rear wall, but then this becomes a timber frame adjacent to the tree. And so you see here this relationship of coming alongside the tree to enter into the space in the middle of the space on either side of the column that is the center of that wall. And um, so it's a lightweight timber building framed, uh, the frame made explicit here through the column that the two doors slide aside from, but it's also lined in plywood to the rear, um, has a um, Douglas fir structure to the roof. And um, you see here a, a couple of specific details I'll come back to um, that we have the lining proud of the frame so that we can get hook, picture hooks on them for the paintings. Um, but also in kind of mirroring the structural column, uh, this um, inlay to the rear where all the surfaces are set in, which um, had the benefit of concentrating the services in one place so that um, works could go on in parallel, but also is a kind of um, services mirror to the structural column. So this um, timber frame lined with a painting desk at one end and a washing up storage, brush washing storage uh, area at the other end. These um, various timbers coming together and kind of utilizing those joints to um, provide a home for the picture hooks for the paintings. And this, um, this area for the services laid flush, but in a different timber. Um, so those are birch plies um, to the walling mainly. And then this is um, Douglas fir with cutouts for switches, lights and so on. And so the project being very small, um, but almost, um, um, almost diagrammatic in its simplicity, I suppose, but founded on making this relationship between the interior space and the tree um, such that when you're inside the space you open up and you feel that you're sharing the space with the tree um, but also born out of a kind of um, very real requirement to protect protect the tree and in um, in the way that we were working so moving towards rural projects, this is also a small studio space. This is in um, the north of England in Yorkshire. And um, you see this um, village plan on the edge of the moors, one of these kind of linear villages and the projects at the top end here. And there's a house with offset and outbuilding. Um, and the outbuilding had once upon a time um, had kind of livestock in it maybe you have you know a, um, a horse or something and uh but it was completely derelict when we came so we um we chose to repair it but then or repair the walls um and remove the roof and replace it but then make a new interior suitable for use as a studio with a central column that supports a new roof beam. The old roof beam had uh, collapsed. And then on one quadrant, a um, roof light and another quadrant, a, a deck that allows storage or sleeping. And um, so the main house on the right with this wall continuing on making the space between and this, um, column of concrete, which is um, uh, extended to form um, a platform here, storage along the back. And you see here the, um, the floor tiles um, kind of rotating around the uh, central column. And actually we were, um, we returned a few years later and made a new bay window that overlooked the project. 
So this is the um, kind of charming old building in, in after we've removed the collapsing roof with its almost storybook sense of two small windows either side a door. And we worked, um, we worked on this project with the father and son. And um, it was interesting, they, um, the father did all the masonry work and the son did all the um, joinery and carpentry. And then the two of them worked together forming the concrete column in the center of the project, the kind of the concrete being this um, combination of masonry and carpentry. And, um, and I suppose we, we had a second round of the project. We, we designed it. And then when we met these two, we adjusted the design. We discovered what they could do. Uh, we were kind of interested in this idea of just the two of them doing the whole works and kind of, I suppose, simplified the palette of materials and the kind of um, skills trades involved so that the two of them could do it all. And you see in this drawing the central column and the idea of the new internal elements, the roof light, the deck, the staircase up to the deck and the um, bookshelving all somehow um, uh, oriented around this central column. And the finished building, the exterior, as uh, you see the kind of moors in the background, the moorlands in the background, the house glimpsed through there and this kind of charming small building that from the outside feels tiny, um, but from the inside, there's this kind of surprising change in scale. Um, and you see in this photograph, the, the kink in the column with the smaller section going on to prop the roof and this part here propping the um, sleeping storage deck and all the um, all the walls have been repaired and then lime washed and all of the timber here is traditional um, uh, solid timber construction it's all uh, Douglas fir I think the only difference is that the upper carpentry is left rough sawn you see here the kind of stain, it's like staining here. And actually when you get close up on these parts here, you can see their, um, the kind of saw marks. Whereas the, the lower bits, the staircase and the shelving have been um, sanded and oiled. So there's a kind of um, very slight uh, um, refinement to the touch. Um, in contrast to the kind of upper rough, roughness. And yet, whilst, um, yeah, one's this kind of um, joinery one touches that, you know, there's a care on our part in aligning the structure with the, um, with the kind of shelving. And the, both the joinery elements but also this flooring almost dancing around this column like a kind of maypole or, um, and you know, the outside of the building feels tiny still, but somehow this combination of an extremely large roof light and the column that reaches upwards gives the small space a sense of um, generosity and scale, lightness. Um, uh, with this, uh, and even though it's one space, you also get a kind of, uh, secondary space underneath, uh, the deck and another secondary space above the deck. So it's one very small project that still manages to house kind of different spaces and an enjoyment of the existing condition that we uh, repaired it and white and lime washed it, but were careful not to over repair it. And kind of working with that um, existing wall to construct this kind of material palette of the concrete column, the tiles in the floor that dance around the column, and then this very rich timber um, that provides a warmth to the space. 
Um, so this project is um, a on the outskirts of uh, the city of Bristol. Um, it was uh, on adjacent to a um, wildlife area, and the um, wildlife trust had obtained an additional part of land that they were adding to the um, uh, nature reserve but also wanted a temporary seasonal unheated shelter for visitors. So it was an extremely low budget building, but also actually because of the um, a particular circumstances had to be delivered in an extremely short time. So we had this twofold problem of how to go extremely quickly and how to go extremely cheaply. And our solution was that we um, advise the client on buying an off the shelf farm building that we would specify and that it was a building that was detailed by others. It came pre-detailed, um, but we would specify it nevertheless, and then fit it out and add a canopy to it. So this simple plan here, you see the kind of farm building that we've got, which we fit out with um uh toilets and a kitchen and storage and then the canopy that we put on the outside of it that allows kind of sheltered visitors but also actually it kind of extends beyond um uh because you approach the um because the building addresses the nature reserve and you approach from this bottom side here you park your car and approach this way so actually by extending beyond, we're kind of showing the canopy from the rear, um, and then you can enter it and take shelter um, beneath the canopy, uh, either entering the space or out of hours, it's all locked and you just take shelter there. So these were the kind of drawings produced by the um, um, specialist company who produced farm buildings, Farm Plus. Um, and we accept their details, their standard profiles, um, but specify within that constraint. And so the building becomes this two part um, of uh, this uh, standard building and a kind of canopy, although the standard building is fit out and the um, this ready-made small scale barn comes in a kit of parts with a specialist team who put it together in a few weeks on site. Um, and then we got a couple of guys who spent a few more weeks building the canopy and building this fit out furniture um, inside. So actually the um, this ability to not have to detail it and not have to um, procure it um, that actually you're buying an off-the-shelf product that you then enjoy the specification of and the adaptation of allowed us to work really cheaply and quickly and the finished building however is kind of presents itself through the canopy that is the thing that um, uh, uh, provides a, a kind of primary facade to the nature reserve and the extended canopy means that uh, there's a gateway of sorts as you uh, approach with an enjoyment of the timber construction of that canopy and of the out of hours space um, beneath it that's made of the timber carpentry, but also in enjoyment of these big galvanized steel um, farm doors. that reflect both the greenery and the, and the kind of warmth of the timber. So the final project um, I'm going to speak about is um, also a rural project. It's, um, it's, it's a, a archive for a drawing collection um, uh, housed by the Drawing Matter. Um, 
and it is based in Somerset and works from a working farmyard. So the building um, we worked on is this dark one, which kind of sits in the middle um, and uh, to the left of various old farm buildings and to the right, the kind of working farmyard. So a very kind of very particular relationship of site and brief, um, uh, well, actually not particularly exceptional, very exceptional relationship. And you see here the original farm housed up on the uh, side of the valley in these old masonry buildings. That's another view of it. And then lower down, closer to the bottom of the valley, you see this T building. Um, and actually this middle section was later demolished an hour um, site involved itself with this building here. Although um, subsequently in the 1950s, 60s and 70s, um, actually a series of larger scale um, agricultural buildings uh, were constructed along the base of the valley that um, had a very different character. And also you see here in the rear, a recently constructed cow shed by Stephen Taylor Architects. And this is the building we were working with, which was, when we came to it, was completely dilapidated. The reason being it had kind of been built into the um, side of the valley. So all the water came down the valley sides and kind of drenched this rear wall. And there was kind of, through lack of care, it was collapsing. And we were required uh, through planning to retain some of it although there was um, a recognition that actually what was there was not appropriate for what we were trying to do. So uh, we came to a kind of uh, negotiated compromise with the planners of retaining part of the building and removing part. And our uh, model here shows the adjacency of us with the other wing of it with a small space between. And then on the right hand side, these larger um, agricultural buildings that came along later. And our project um, produced two parts with an oversailing roof um, so that the overall form of a single long um, building remains from the kind of um, history of the site. Um, but actually, the way that the project operates is uh, that you enter past these remaining walls into a cupboard space with two um, discrete buildings either side. On the right hand side, a working studio space, um, an office for the management of drawing matter. And on the left hand side, where the drawings are stored and, and um, prepared and um, are shown. Um, and then actually it goes through and there's a constructed space to the rear. You see here in the section, you see the existing wall retained at the front and this new space carved out of the valley side at the back. But significantly you also see the construction of the um, archive, which was made in um, cross laminated timber. And unlike um, our other CLT projects here, we um, constructed with solid um, CLT without any insulation. So there is insulation to the ground concrete slab. Uh, so there's a concrete slab here with insulation and um, hardwood flooring, but actually the walls and the roof are made with solid CLT with no uh, insulation and no lining. Uh, we do have an oversailing roof. Obviously, we've kind of done everything we can to protect the um, CLT from the elements and, and the kind of main thing being this big generous roof that oversails. But also um, you see here at the ridge, there's a gap between the roofing and the CLT with a kind of ventilated ridge here. So there's kind of no sense of overheating in the summer because you know there's a draft up here that goes out. So we gently took apart the old building and after removing uh, what was um, in a poor state, were left with these front and rear walls. And we kind of dug out the valley side so that the same problem didn't occur. 
and constructed the two uh, slabs with this um, retaining wall that accommodates a seat and kind of a staircase up to the landscape. And so after the concrete works, um, you see both the kind of preparatory foundations, but also the bench, the steps, the single entrance step here that all formed in concrete kind of anticipate the coming building, which um, also came from Central Europe, um, delivered and craned into place. And actually, because it was made of solid CLT, the, the panels had a real um, weight to them this time. You know, the, the, the ones in the strange house are generally 100 millimeters thick. These are uh, generally 300 millimeters thick. And um, because there's no internal or external lining, there has to be a certain care over waterproofing, but also air tightness. So you see here the join between these two panels, there's grooves in the top and bottom, double grooves in the top and bottoms with these aluminium fins that slot into the bottom and then this is slotted in top, uh, but also these rubber strips that um, line the junctions between the panels so that we get this um, airtight construction. And in parallel to this uh, engineered offsite construction, we worked in a, in a number of ways with different craftspeople. We worked with a local joiner on making some beautiful hardwood floors, but we also worked with a um, specialist joiner and an upholsterer here on making some um, bespoke panels to um, display the drawings on. So this here is a um, thin um, piece of tri-board, about 27 mil, but similar to the huge thick walls it's kind of got a um, engineered construction and we've um lining that with these kind of cheap packing blankets but actually the care of craft somehow um offsetting the kind of cheapness of the material um and the finished building uh sits discreetly within the farmhouse farmyard um, nestled behind the existing wall. Although to the rear, you see a, a new, um, a new facade. You see the overhanging roof that protects the top of the walls from rain. You see the, um, windows and doors fitted to the outside to protect the, um, window reveals. And here you step up into the studio space. And there, and here you see the kind of large um, upstand of the, of the um, slab that lifts it off the ground. And I think there was a kind of interest on our part uh, in this way of constructing that on one, on one hand, this use of monolithic uh, CLT, um, responds to the kind of simple construction of the farmyard. It responds, obviously there's the kind of, there's the similarity in some of the other materials we use in the kind of concrete agricultural paving, the galvanized steel structure and guttering and the fiber cement and so on, all of that has an obvious relationship. But also I think there's a relationship between the simplicity of construction that um, these old farm buildings had that actually um, is rare to find in contemporary um, construction of complex layerings. And this idea that it's just a wall, it's just a thick wall, um, somehow um, connects with that. But at the same time, it's a, um, it's a kind of very sophisticated 21st century way of constructing as well. It's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a recent product, but one of the things that we were particularly interested in it was that it had both um, thermal mass and insulating properties. So actually one could build, um, you could build like this and it could provide a warm environment 
that insulated well, but also kind of moderated the kind of moisture and temperature through its depth and thermal mass. And maybe that's always interesting, but in, in, in relation to housing drawings, that seemed like a particularly interesting um, thing to do to house drawings in a, in a kind of stable environment that uh, without recourse to complex mechanical engineering has a certain um, passive ability to um, moderate environment. And here we see the cupboard space between the two um, with the um, three families of materials you see here, kind of a timber family of materials. There's also galvanized steel, which provides the doors and windows and the guttering and the structure, but also the light switches and so on. And then this kind of cementitious um, family, which is the in situ concrete retaining wall, these kind of off the shelf um, floor, precast concrete floor slabs, which actually are normally used in um, pig farms. Uh, and we've kind of appropriated them. And then this thin fiber cement and the kind of um, us enjoying, I suppose, the relationship of the grain of that with the grain of this paving. And stepping in, there's a certain warmth to the interiors. This is the studio space. And this is the looking from the studio space out and back in again. And this idea that um, we only fix to the outside and inside. So all the windows and doors are fixed to the outside and all the um, switches on a, an internal shelving, a surface fixed on the inside. And a certain warmth that comes to the interior through um, this use of timber. And also an enjoyment here, we see the two timber floors of using this traditional locally grown hardwood. Um, in the studio, we've got a kind of rough sawn um, finish and, and in the archive itself, there's a kind of sanded and sealed and it's got a nice border and this clay of the um, hardwood flooring with this um, engineered monolithic CLT. And the panels that we made. And I think it's kind of important to say, you know, those kind of, those photos were, were taken on completion and actually the building's kind of settled, but also it's a very um, vibrant building of active use there's always things going on and it's no longer this kind of um, clean and empty shell. It's a kind of um, busy working archive where exhibitions and publications are prepared, um, but also people work and it provides a, um, a kind of housing for that activity, that there's a care in the construction um, but also it's, um, it's a kind of robust care as well. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the end.